you have to take within your head and take it down your arms to pencil and make sketches and communicate. In my life, I've, I've been extremely fortunate working with some of the most talented architects on the planet uh, and made good friends with them. Uh, I learned how to communicate with them. So I was trying to uh, put together for young architects and engineers a kind of statement of how I felt about trying to go from here up to there in the, in the profession. And as I try to say to, to them, uh, you think you're in the architectural business or you think you're in the engineering business, but you're not. You're in the communication business. But, I mean, if you don't know about architecture, if you don't know about dance, you don't know about the culture of the country you're working in, in and so forth, you're no place. I mean, you, you have to take within your head and take it down your arms to pencil and make sketches and communicate. I think if you talk with any successful person, they all understand that if you take Andy Warhol, the mm -hmm. painter, right? And you take John Doe, the painter, the difference between them is not so much in their painting, but in their communication skills. And you go to these meetings that, that we're involved in right now, many of them are very good communicators. That's how they got where they are. Not because of, necessarily because of ideas, they have to have ideas too. But not only did they have ideas, but they, had, they were able to communicate those ideas to people, not necessarily even in their own discipline, but outside of their own discipline. Take the United States Steel Building in Pittsburgh. When it was built, it was the largest privately owned building in the world. Um, what does it look like? Well, the architects wanted to build a triangular shaped building and plan. I thought that it would be much better if we notched the corners of the triangles. That way we would have six corner offices instead of three, and we wouldn't have those big expanse of space out there a long ways from the lifts and so forth. So um, it was better office space, and I thought it would look better, and by the way, it responded much better in the wind. That is, it was less wind sensitive than the pure triangle. The, the developer wanted to make a rectangular building. So we put together wind tunnel models of every kind of building shape, including ours and the architects and the developers and round ones and other things and compared them. And we were able to show that our, our design was much better in terms of actual performance and uh, the rental people liked it much better and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. Uh, we're doing a project, I did a, I am Pei's last project and we were having lunch in Gramercy Tavern, a re restaurant that Healy enjoyed a lot in New York City and he told me about it and his idea was to take a Japanese fan and form it around a kind of a teardrop shaped plan and offset so it sloped back away from the entrance. And as we were about to leave, I said, you know, I am, when I look at that, I don't see a Japanese fan. What I see is the Danish lampshade. Stopped right there. We didn't discuss it any farther. The next morning, it was smooth. I'm not saying you have to be brutally blunt with everybody, but in the profession, I think, you, you, can't, you can't play games with people. I would say the big gap between the architect and the, and the engineer, I, I think all too often each of us focuses on our own world, right? And, and uh, they're not terribly interested in and haven't educated themselves to think about that which is outside of that. So that, that's a great hindrance in my view to communication. And the very successful engineers, of course, are very good at communicating their ideas and, 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 and they learn about culture and et cetera.